Central St Martin's College, September 2017. British company Jaguar Land Rover is hosting an event called TechFest. They're showcasing new innovations and bringing together experts from the industry and beyond. Their goal, nothing less than considering the future of the car itself. My name's George Lamb, and I'm here to check it out. Wow. So here we are at TechFest 2017 at Central St. Martins, one of the top art and design schools in the world. We're going to be checking in with some of the stalls later on in the day, and then somewhere down there in the main theatre, Jaguar Land Rover have invited some of the best minds from across the business to discuss the future of mobility and transportation. These are exciting times, and I can't wait to hear what they've got to say. So we're just going into the first talk of the day. He's the CEO of Jaguar Land Rover, and apparently he's got a, a big uh, new message to unveil to everybody, so come and check it out. From 2020, all of our new vehicles will be electrified. We are on the brink of the most exciting revolution in mobility in our history, giving our customers more choice. We will introduce it's big news. Electrifying the entire Jaguar Land Rover fleet from 2020 is a massive commitment, and the announcements keep coming. Next up, Jaguar Land Rover's Fiona Pargeta. Our advanced design team have created a vision for the car of 2040 and beyond. We've called it the future type concept. It's so weird looking at the future like this, looking at how driving's going to work. It's amazing. But there was one last treat in store. We've electrified the past to ensure the E-Type's future, a car that has always been ahead of its time, an icon that lives on in the cutting edge of technology. An electric E-Type? Awesome. So here we go, my first time behind the wheel of an E-Type. Wow, look at this. <laughs> we take an original car, yeah. take everything out, completely restore it, but fit the electric powertrain okay. instead of the original engine. Ah, so this is literally like a 40, 50 year old car? Yeah, absolutely. So it would have been a 4.2 litre straight six engine, but now we've got a 220 kilowatts electric motor. Okay, and so and is the idea to put these into production then? We'd very much like to do that, yeah. No, it's great, it's lovely. It feels lovely to be in it. So the first talk we're going to watch today is about millennials and mobility. Traditionally, a first car has always been a rite of passage, but the big question today is, are they still going to hold the same place in our hearts in 20 years' time? What does car ownership mean to you personally? You know, if, if something can replace the car in being convenient, then perhaps you don't need to own a car. People still want to be able to have that freedom to kind of yeah. go out with their friends and do what they want, mm -hmm. and that's something you need your own car for. I wish I was around in 100 years' time you know, to see where this goes, but you know, we're at a time where we can really shape the future. So much to think about. Now, the good news is we've got a backstage pass, and so we're going to scoot round here and meet some of our panellists as they're coming off stage and have a little catch-up with them. Thank you very much. Well, you've just come off stage. You were part of a panel talking about millennials and their interaction with cars. And in, in 20 years' time, what will that look like? We've talked quite a lot about um, third spaces. So uh, spaces that are uh, they're not your home, they're not your work, but they're kind of spaces that turn from one purpose to another seamlessly. Yeah, and the car's now joining the, the third I think, spaces I think it list. Could, I, I think it has the potential to become a third space, because right. if the car can become a productive space, okay. so if you're thinking a driverless car or hooked up, uh, you know, they can, they can shop when they're in the car, they can pay bills, they want to buy time so they can do, spend more time doing what they love, what, what they really they're interested love. in, right. yes. It's going to be interesting watching it mm. all unfold. Matilda, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So if it's all about making more time in the car, Neil Sharp from Bosch might have just the solution. 
What's the most interesting stuff that you guys are, are immersed in? It's things like artificial intelligence and getting the vehicle and it recognises you, knows who you are and understand your schedule. I Just think, like, George, you're not going to make yeah, that meeting. George, yeah, you look terrible. Right. This is going on. This really? is going. Well, yeah, we yeah, genuinely yeah. will be able to tell yeah. me I look terrible. Well, you think about it, right? In the automated world, yeah. it needs to have an ability to kind of understand how you're feeling. How far off, genuinely, before the car saying, George, you look unwell, let's stop and get you like yeah. a B12 shot. You're talking next 10 year period. 10 years? Yeah, I thought yeah, you were going to yeah. say like next 50 years. No, so no, no. What, within I, think, I think it's the next step of personalization. Yeah. I mean, this is where it's going to go. The way we travel is changing fast. And the next thing I saw showcased was Jaguar Land Rover's stunning vision of the future. When do we think, realistically, we might be driving a, a, a future type? And would I even be driving it? Two good questions. So the future type is a fully autonomous urban concept right. from around the 2030, 2040 timescale. Wow. And this is a car you don't need to own to enjoy. So rather than buying a Jaguar, I buy a kind of pass to Jaguar. Yeah, you call them when you need them. Right. At the heart of the future type is a steering wheel unlike any I've seen before. And having a personal steering wheel yeah. can embody that future type of. So, this, right, so rather than owning a car, help. I own this. Yes, yes. And so this is all done up to my spec. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this carries all your knowledge about how you like to drive. It might even offer advice on when the right conditions are. So weird to think you'll be sitting at home and then your car tells you, George, that Brilliant. road you like is really clear. Why Get not? out there. It will be millennials and their children who might one day own something like the future type. So I caught up with YouTube star Jim Chapman to see what he made of it. Wow, I love that idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you'd be up for it. Yeah, it kind of makes sense. There's less cars on the road, there's less congestion, uh, there'll be electric, so there's less, less emissions. I'm a big fan of um, cutting carbon at the moment. I feel like we just, we just um, pump out so much. Are you a petrol head, though? I am. This right. is the thing. I currently drive an F-Type, which right. I absolutely adore, but I'm looking at the I-Pace over there. Uh, and goes faster, for yeah. one thing, which is exciting. But also, you know, it's just much better for the environment. Um, and I think I can just plug it in outside my house. I really want one. Me yeah, too. It's stunning. Me too, absolutely. Now, I, like so many others, got a diesel car thinking that was the right move for the environment, but the, uh, the conversation's changing all the time and, uh, and there's some very conflicting views. This next talk is called We've Got to Talk About Diesel and I would imagine it's going to get quite heated. Diesel is the devil and we do need to ban it. The more complex questions are which vehicles, where, when and how. It's impossible for mainstream electrification because we just can't cope with it. The technology is not there yet. Going to hybrid, mm. I think, makes eminent sense until the electric technology yep. catches up in an affordable way for real punters. We have gone to the, uh, the Air Research Board, proved that our cars are clean. We are the only company that's been able to launch a diesel since Dieselgate in the US. With my head spinning from the debate, I met Jaguar Land Rover PR director Fiona Pargeter, the mastermind of TechFest, to find out why she wanted to bring together such a mix of experts. What do you want to come out of from, from today? Well, you know what? It's no one industry can solve the future of mobility. You know, we've been talking about electric cars, we've been talking about autonomous driving, and that's lots of different industries and lots of different people that need to come together. Right, teamwork yeah. makes the dream work, Absolutely. basically. Absolutely. Right, yeah. okay. And so, and so it's a, a call to arms, I suppose, then, for everybody. Let's figure this out mm. together and let's go off and you know, find solutions. Completely. What's really interesting for me is that actually, obviously, nobody knows what the future is going to look like. And what we're seeing today is there's a load of different disciplines, a load of different businesses acknowledging that if we're going to figure out and shape what the future of mobility and transport looks like, then it means we're all going to have to work together. Next up, I met one of the people who'll be creating this new world. So, Daniel, you are Jaguar Land Rover's newest recruit, correct? Yes, that's correct. And you, you got a job with JLR in a totally different way? Completely different than the ordinary, and uh, to be fair, I'm still surprised that I've got it. Right. <laughs> and, and just talk us through it. Gorillas and, and JLR have done a collaboration together, is that right? Yeah, they've collaborated together to uh, recruit even more engineers for JLR. OK, so what did you have to do then? I had to break a code within three days. 
And what do your mates and your family think about it? Yeah, they can't believe I've done it, but they've given me all the support, and uh, yeah, I just can't wait to start now. Congratulations, dude. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much. But the future of engineering doesn't just rest on recruiting young men. So we've got a massive shortfall of engineers in the UK at the moment. That's particularly evident amongst female engineers. The next talk we're going to be watching is about women in engineering, and they'll be discussing what they're doing to readdress the balance. If we reach gender equality, we have the ability to add over $12 trillion to the global GDP by 2025. Equality on occasions will mean that women are predominant in a whole range of areas of life. I'm here because I really want to have this conversation with my niece when she's considering her A-levels. She's only 12 months at the moment, so that's a few years away. And I want her to think that it's utterly bizarre that we even had this occasion. After the panel, I headed backstage again to find out more. So, Benita, you are president of the Women's Engineering Society, right? Yes, I am. And women happen to be very few in the engineering environment. Right. So I do really think that we need to be more visible, especially in the media. It's right. easy to know what a doctor looks like. They are going to make people better. Gotcha. Engineers, we're there to actually then make societal change better. So, so engineering is actually a lot more dynamic than perceived? It touches all of us in every, everyday life. So you're an aerodynamics engineer, is that right? Yes. And yes. Are you, how, one of how many female engineers at Jaguar? Not that many. Uh, right. So we've got 10,000 engineers, and I think there's 11% are female. Really? Um, so we are a bit of a novelty at the moment. Do you feel like there is too much conditioning from a young age to, to, to say that you know women can't move into jobs like engineering? I think we don't encourage girls to learn through trial and error, which is something that you fundamentally need as an engineer for problem solving. If there's any young girls watching, uh, what advice would you give them if, if they're thinking about getting into engineering? I say just give it a go and don't feel like you have to produce a toy rocket ship and just being true to who you are in exploring the things that you're interested in. It looks like the future's electric. So I met up with Ian Callum, designer of Jaguar's new iPace, to find out more. Ian, we're moving into a brave new world. Everything's going electric. Uh, how I know you're a big petrol head. You've spent yeah. the last, what, 30, 40 years? 40 years now. 40 years designing, designing cars. cars with petrol engines. That yeah. must be quite a difficult thing for you to... to... It's, it's a big jump. Yeah. It's a big jump. But, you know, once you get your head into electrification, it's actually quite satisfying. And from a design point of view, it's great because I've got more freedom designing the rest of the car. The mechanical cars, you've got, you've got a chain of, of, of power, your engine, gearbox, drivetrain. With this, you've got electric motors that are just held together by wires. OK. So uh, there's a lot more freedom. It's Great. Fantastic. And so, and today, uh, you guys have announced that from 2020, all the new cars will be electric or, or hybrid, right? You know, because this, this is not about um, if it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. So let's just get on with it. And, um, you know, let's get on with it with confidence. I'm really excited to watch how it all progresses and watch how you guys kind of, you know, kind of weave your way through it all. It's, uh, it's going to be great. You're going to love it. Yeah, no, you, I, I know we're no, particularly no, no, going to love it. Love yeah. it. Fascinating stuff. Thing is, the kind of electric cars I'm used to are a little bit less high tech. Oh, four wheel drive, no, no danger. Oh, oh. Cut. Looks like I could do with some driving lessons. No. Ah! Smashed it. Champ. Over 10,000 people visited TechFest to check out this electric future. And it's fantastic to see a great British brand like Jaguar Land Rover leading the world and leading the way. So that's pretty much it for TechFest 2017. It's been the most incredible adventure into what the future might look like. I've got a lot to go and process when I get home tonight. So I look forward to seeing you back here same time next year for TechFest 2018.